Now, the Wolfram Alpha plugin is actually like a game changer, you know, like to, to use cliche terms, game changer. Like, if you think about what the limitations of ChatGPT are, the data for GPT-4 is uh, September 2021, for, for GPT-3, which is the free ChatGPT, is June 2020. It's able to answer questions that have answers in the internet data up to 2021, but it's not able to look things up, particularly things like statistics. Whereas Wolfram Alpha is both a, um, sort of a lookup table for verified published statistics and a, a, a simply a system for doing calculations. So it, 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 the strengths of Wolfram Alpha and the weaknesses of ChatGPT like are aligned perfectly. So let me show you some of the stuff I've been able to do using Wolfram Alpha. By the way, this is like also one of the more reliable plugins. Career advice, new chat. No, wait, what am I doing? AI, Wolfram. Okay, suppose you have a resume and uh, you need some career advice. Like the world's changing constantly, particularly in the, in the domain of like technology jobs. Things are going in and out of fashion. The needs are changing. It depends also on the country you're in. And again, I'm jealous of all the Americans because all the data here is most relevant to them. But I gave it my resume. It asked for a Google, like it asked for a, 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 an online link. And then I posted it. And so the, the plugin for doing that, I should probably add that to the, to the thing, is called Ask Your PDF. And it reads the resume. And then I asked it, read the entire resume and tell me the top five best paid job titles that I am qualified to do. Please try to provide an average salary for each of the job titles. And these are the following. So cybersecurity analyst, software developer, project manager, data scientist, IT consultant. And yeah, funnily enough, software developer, good old traditional software developer is on average the highest paid of the lot. I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, Although, no, sorry, data scientists. I might, I might switch my masters. I don't know. I'll think about it. Um, the thing is, I think it did this twice. And the second time around, actually, no, I would trust these answers more uh, because these are actually sourced. I'm, I'm scratching my head a little bit to see why I've got two answers. I'll fetch the average salaries for these positions. So first it did one from just ChatGPT and then it did Wolfram, sorry. And the update here was the software developer was indeed the best paid and the data scientist not so much. So maybe maybe scratch the data science. And this has sources. If we click the source, that is essentially what it did to look it up. And uh, then you can look up more like people employed, workforce in action, median wage, 50% range. So like, if you can think about this sort of high level, live real time statistical analysis added with ChatGPT, this is mind blowing. Um, this is really, really cool. So yeah, I mean, if you're in school and doing an assignment, um, like you can actually draw some very, very interesting conclusions and insights from something like Wolfram Alpha and ChatGPT that, you know, will probably tell you something that, you know, is way beyond any expectations uh, of, of whoever is sending the assignment. Okay, you can ask it so, sort of like some fun, silly questions. Um, like, what if my salary beat inflation? Here's a, a good piece of career advice for everybody. Yeah, if your salary beats inflation by 5% every year, you're going to make a ton of money. So I asked Wolfram, um, it had to basically get the average, uh, it had to get the average inflation in Australia from 2007 to 2023. It had that data, like apparently it had some gap years. And so when I said doing it every year, maybe it crashed because it had to do something like 16 I don't know, 2007 to 23, yeah, 16. You had to do 16 lookups. Maybe that's too many lookups. But it did the average salary in the end. And, you know, it's an interesting little conclusion. So another random thing. Um, 
I was teaching a class, uh, so I, I do those on Friday afternoons, and it was, um, yeah, Python, Linux, and, and cybersecurity for high school kids. And one of the side topics was some kid showed some Python code for the Colatz conjecture. I had no idea what a Colatz conjecture was. So I figured I'd ask uh, ChatGPT. And at that time I was testing the plugins. So let's see, can you please explain to me what the Colatz conjecture was? So that was the explanation. But I had two, I had the Wolfram Colatz conjecture. Yeah. And I asked for a visualization and I got this beautiful thing. So the whole idea of the Colatz conjecture um, if I go back to the last one, is essentially you have a rule. Um, if it's an even number, you have it. And if it's an odd number, you multiply it by three and add one. And if you do that to any number, it will sort of fluctuate, go up and down, but eventually it'll end up as a value of one. And so Wolfram gave me a visualization here. And then I asked for Python code to visualize it. And then I put this into pandas and I was playing around with expanding this table and seeing more patterns. And that was a lot of fun. So like, if you want to understand a mathematical concept, like you can immediately get a, a, an explanation, a visualization, and you can get some Python code to try out and play with. So yeah, I think Wolfram again, plus ChatGPT is pretty amazing. Um, another problem, and we gave this in the Victorian coding challenge. Um, there is a, a type of insect called cicadas and cicadas are super interesting because um, they emerge every either like 13 or 17 years. And that has to do with prime numbers. And so like they, they essentially are dormant in the ground where they're, they lay their larvae and then there's like millions, hundreds of millions of them that come out of the ground like at the same time. And it, it happens on like 13 or 17 year cycles. And yeah, I asked it the problem. If two species of cicadas, one with 17 year cycle and another with 13 year cycle both emerged in 2017 what year will they both emerge next and how many times will they both emerge in the same year during this millennium so there's a whole lot of like language to parse there's a mathematical calculation um there's a lot of reasoning involved and uh let's see how chat gpt did on that so first of all it does a common multiple which is 221 so that means they merge every 221 years and if you add 221 to 2017, you're gonna get 2238, which is correct. So that's gonna be the next emergence. And now in this millennium, it figures out what the millennium is and it gets 3.44. And so the decimal won't count. So it's essentially three. So they're gonna be three emergences. So like, yeah, you can get it to do pretty much uh, like every mathematical type problem that I've messed with, um, Wolfram plugins been really, really, really good for. So yeah, last one thing, I don't know if I have it here from uh, population of Australia. If you click that, you will go, you know, Wolfram Alpha is gonna give you really detailed stats on that. But yeah, it gives you the current population of every city. Shout out to Melbourne. We, I don't know that we want to catch up with Sydney. It's already crowded enough, but Melbourne's nice. Um, I had no idea that essentially Brisbane and Perth were both around two mil. Um, Adelaide, over one million people. If you go to Adelaide, you wouldn't think that. You'd think like it's half a million. So yeah, you get, it essentially looks up this table that's got all these detailed demographics of Australia. So there you go. That's Wolfram.